Hey soul family, welcome back to the channel. This is the White Feather Tarot and in today's reading we're taking a look at an important message from your spirit guides uh, in regard to something that is going on in your life right now. And to do this reading you can either pick your pile using your zodiac signs. If this is your preferred method you will find a timestamp to that down in the description box which will take you straight to the part of the introduction where we shuffle your zodiac signs and find out in which of the piles they're going to fall under. But if you, of course, prefer to pick your piles using your intuition, there are two ways in today's reading in which you can do that. You can either pick the upmost card on top of each deck. And so for pile number one, you have the hanged man. For pile number two, you have the high priestess. And for pile number three, you have the moon card. If you prefer to pick your piles using your crystals, then let me introduce these to you. For pile number one, you have the beautiful Mookite Jasper. And this is what your crystal looks like. For pile number two, you have the beautiful selenite. And this is what it looks like. And for pile number three, you have the blue dot jasper. And this is what your crystal looks like. So, take a look at which one of these three piles or three, three cards or three crystals you're the most drawn to. And this or these will be the piles for you here today. Feel free to pick more than one pile in case you feel drawn to them. You can even pick all of the piles um, if you are drawn to them. Uh, alternatively, if you feel drawn to just one, then do note that this will be your only pile. So it's all according to how you feel right now as you take a look at your cards. And once you're ready, you'll find the timestamps down in the description box. Click on your times and I will see you in your readings. In a moment, I am about to assign different zodiac signs to each pile. And so if this is something that you do not prefer, please pause the video, take as much time as you need. And as mentioned, I will see you in your reading. But if you prefer to pick your piles using your zodiac signs, then my dear soul family, this part of the introduction was created specifically for you guys. And what I like to do is, Shuffle your zodiac signs really well. And then we will be drawing out four zodiac signs for each of the piles today. Okay, I think they're well shuffled. Let's now pull out the four the first four zodiac signs. So I've got one, two, three, four. So the signs for pile number one are Scorpio, Libra, Virgo, and Capricorn. The signs for pile number two are one, two, three and four, um, Gemini, Cancer, Sagittarius, and Aquarius. And finally, the signs for pile number three are Aries, Leo, Taurus, and Pisces. 
So, my dear soul family, these are the zodiac signs and their association to each of the piles today. Please feel free to choose your piles using your sun, moon, or rising. I highly recommend you uh, pick through the three. You might even find them all under one pile. You might find them distributed amongst two or three. Alternatively, if you prefer to pick your piles using another placement in your chart, then of course, feel free to do that as well. And once you're ready, you'll find the timestamps down in the description box. Click on your times and I will see you in your readings. Hi, pile number one. Welcome to your reading. Your crystal is the beautiful Mukite Jasper. Looks like this is your card as well as this one. And this is the deck that we will be using. Some of you have picked the Hanged Man from this deck. And if you picked your pile using your zodiac signs, then in that case, the signs for this pile are Scorpio, Libra, Virgo, and Capricorn. Welcome to your reading, guys. Uh, if these are not your zodiac signs, as I always remind you guys, they are not the official zodiac signs of this pile. It's uh, just a way for others to pick their piles as well. Those of you who prefer to pick them using your zodiac signs. Okay, so let's keep the signs to the side and pull out your last oracle card. I did feel really called to using a board today and casting some runes on them for some predictions towards the end. So I really feel it's part of your message, although it's not in the title, but I really felt called to do it. And so uh, we're gonna have fun doing that towards the end or mid of the reading, depends on where the cards take us. Okay, so your cards are, so right off the bat, you've got the death card, which is very, um, a huge meaning in tarot and spirituality of rebirth, something ending, uh, creating some form of rebirth in your life. Something is changing. <clears throat> so maybe you're going through a great change or something. Let's see. You have teaching. No wonder you were drawn to the hanged man. I think I'm going to pull that out for you, actually. You have ah, Sobek, the ancient Egyptian god Sobek, with the keyword unpredictability. You have grief. Well, the tortoise here definitely reminds me of the Hindu uh, tortoise that carries the world. You have intrigue. And finally, you have Sea Witch, and it's being propelled forward, right? Very interesting. Okay, mm, I could push this a little bit up and fit your card right there, Sea Witch. There. All right, let's take now a look at your tarot cards to get a full understanding of what this message is. We're taking a look at your, uh, sorry, your spirit guides message in regards to something that is going on in your life at the moment. totally wants to come out <laughs> okay so let's take a look at your tarot cards you have the 
Eight of Cups. Yeah, you can definitely see you're leaving something. Death, Eight of Cups. Something is ending. You're leaving something. You're leaving maybe a, um, a certain level and moving on to a new level. The Page of Wands. The Two of Wands. You can see the cleansing going on here. The Nine of Cups. Look, whatever you're going through at the moment, your message here is strong. It may look one way, but it's actually leading to a wish fulfillment. You're moving towards a wish fulfillment without even knowing. And you have the Ten of Wands. Yeah, end of uh, this journey you're going through at the moment uh, is helping to end something heavy that you've been really carrying that you did not like and lead you to something that you love. Okay, so let's stop there for a moment and take a closer look at your cards to have a grasp on what your spirit guides are saying because I'm starting to notice some patterns here. You can see that at the moment, <clears throat> You're going through a huge, as mentioned, transformation transformation in your life that momentarily may feel uncomfortable and may make you feel that it's very unpleasant. But it's greatly showing you that there is another opportunity elsewhere. So... It is a huge transformation that is propelling you towards what you are wishing for. And so it may you may feel a great imbalance at the moment as you're going through this. But but your key um your key energy here as you're going through what may feel like a momentary grief because you might be thinking that things are over, that it's going towards a bad place, which is far from that. Um, what I noticed here is the Hindu tortoise that carries the world. I believe it's called Kachhata, if I'm not mistaken. And so this is the um, form of Vishnu who supports and carries the world. So you can really see the idea that although it may truly feel uncomfortable, this change, it may cause you to feel grief, scared with Sobek, the ancient Egyptian god Sobek, who was both revered because he was so powerful, full of strength uh, and virility, but at the same time, he was uh, unpredictable and scary. So that's the dual energy that we're seeing in your reading over and over is that you may really feel like things are unpredictable, they're scary, but it's genuinely taking care of you. It's energy that is strongly propelling you forward. It's making a huge, strong change in your life, all while supporting you to cleanse out older energies that need to die off, uh, that weren't doing you good. In fact, they were really making you feel heavy, unnecessarily heaviness. And at the same time, showing you as you're, as you're going through this change right off the bat, you're noticing, hey, although I hate this change so much, I am noticing that there is a huge opportunity actually. And, and so you will be going through this dual nature, um, yeah, dual energy at the same time where part of you hates what's going on because it's strong change. But another part of you can truly see that there is a great opportunity arising right at the same time. And at some points you're going to feel, oh, I love what's coming here. Is this really happening for me? And another time you're like, no, 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 no. I want my stability. I don't want things to change. And you see teaching and death in conjunction to each other are giving me the idea that right off the bat, you are learning about this opportunity. 
but at the same time you are still going through that grief of losing something it's not easy but as you can see it's truly a cleanse for a new clean clean clear page for you to achieve your a dream that you have without that heavy energy and it's kind of like it's the only way to remove that energy and for you to get longer time to experience that wish in fact, with Sea Wish, I almost feel like things are going to change dramatically so much towards a positive direction that it's almost going to feel like it must be orchestrated by a magical power. It can't just have it can't just be a coincidence where without any plans you're leaving that old and right away there is the new and and you're tr that's why there's a transformation where you're like instantly moving from the old and towards the new so it's really going to feel very magical for you my dear pile number one you're right away going to be illuminated alert of that new thing you're moving towards you're going to love it but you may not like the change that is happening with the old energy okay so let's move on you have the moon card. And it reminds me of the dragons in each corner of the earth, just like with the elephant, the, uh, sorry, with the tortoise here, there are four uh, elephants in each corner holding the world. So again, we get an element of protection. You're being, you're gonna be stable, the square and protected, although you may not see what's, what's up ahead. The strength card again, strength card. And you can see through that strength card, the same dual energy. Scary, but a strong change to your benefit. The full card, causing a new beginning. The lovers, and you can see that you're just to translate it quickly right off the bat. You can see that not only are you going to love this change, but in fact, as you look in retrospect, because these look uh, older now skeletons right if you look in retrospect you will choose <laughs> whatever happened in your life you're gonna feel so lucky that it happened for you and you've got the nine of swords and it's interesting again that you get this specific night nine of swords because yes nine of swords is um feeling anxious feeling scared but you can see here the japanese spirit sorry, not Japanese, Korean spirit, Bulgasari, who takes care of people. He has the ability to protect people from evil spirits uh, as they're sleeping. And so again, Bulgasari represents that chaotic energy, disorder, uh, despair, but at the same time, he protects uh, sleeping uh, souls from any evil spirits you can see that dual energy do you notice it so far so again it's change but you're really protected during that change to move safely to the other side where you actually want to be should we get more information about how this change is gonna be like yeah let's do that we'll read these four at the end as your last uh, message from your guides but actually it won't fit so i'm just gonna put it like this and let's run your runes through it okay so you've got one rune here got the daga's rune on finances hmm. Well, at least what we can see happening as your predictions. We did say we were going to use this in predictions. The dagas is the potential in the new. And so you do have a coin here, actually. So for a lot of you, it's specifically whatever you're going through at the moment is specifically leading to you improving your finances. Right. So can I ask? Other than that, now that we know where it's taking you, for a lot of you, it's finance. Um, what's this change going to feel like, please? 
Okay, we've got another one in home and past. You've got the canal, uh, sorry, the Yera rune. This is perhaps one of the craziest things I have seen, <laughs> but it's like clearing out one energy will lead to another. Because the um, Yera rune is about working towards goals and you have home and the past. And it's crazy because it looks like as you go through healing the past, healing some difficulties that you've had at home, maybe going through releasing the pains, you might find some changes happening in the uh, area of home or area of stability, uh, areas that you felt comfortable nested in. These changes are erupting because you see how the canals is moving. It's like it's taking a bit, pushing it out. And then the other one spins, digging a bit to push it out. I feel like there's cleanse going on in a place where you feel stable because it's releasing some of the emotions in the past leading to, leading to finances. This is... Wild. How is this happening? No, now we need your cards for sure. <laughs> we got a great element from your board here. We understood that these changes aren't necessarily connected. How one thing's changing, leading to something entirely different. It's like maybe you've got some karma that you're releasing. Once it's released, it's going to help. Uh, create abundance in your life in fi in the finance area specifically yeah that's what's going on here some changes maybe at home or in relationships or something that you want to keep in your life and you're realizing that you're holding on or keeping maybe because you're afraid or maybe your mind has convinced you that that's safe with home and this release will make you feel huh that was actually a bad situation. Why did I handle that? That karma is released, creating the abundance that you are supposed to receive. How interesting. So let's get clarification on that. Knight of Swords. Ah, the Three of Swords. Yeah, this looks like great pain from the past. You have the death card again, causing great transformation. And releasing with the devil, the past karma, perhaps. The past karmas are releasing past limiting beliefs with it. It's been holding you down. Now it's being released. You're no longer being kept down. And it's, although it's going to hurt so much, it's not real. The intensity of the pain is the release of the karma and thus helping you transform because with this pain comes great clarity with the Knight of Swords, great truth and great realizations that will forever free you from this past karma. You can see the skeletons in the ground. It's like passed on from one lifetime after the other. Maybe you've released a part of it in each lifetime and you're finally letting go of its uh, being left, let go of from its grasp. This was a like a huge grasp. And it's shifting. I say shifting because you've got the Philippine uh, legend, uh, Manangal, Manangal. And, you, and who's a shapeshifter. And you can see the whole... Energy is shifting greatly as a result of that. Where you start, you're transforming in such a great way at this phase of your life. And as you're transforming drastically like that, you're being supported and taken great care of. You're not going to be left a moment 
but there's cleansing for sure. You can see that cleansing of the mind with the page of swords, the knight of swords. These ideas are finally going to be cleansed and healed. And that's what the hanged man energy is all about. An uncomfortable situation that helps you become enlightened. And you can see here teaching. That's going to be a very valuable lesson to maybe feel independent or feel like you're not in pain when you're going through certain situations or when you see certain people in your home or in your close life. Yeah, it's like you're being released and freed from uh, an ailment almost. Uh, a dis-ease that kept you hostage. And although it may be tempor temporarily painful, but it releases the pain completely. It's like, you know, when a child is in pain and they scream as you try to help them and you try to explain to them, don't worry, don't worry, I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm trying to release that pain. If I put that cream, it's going to numb it and um, it's not going to it's going to help you heal it and it's not going to hurt you. But you can't explain it. And so the child is screaming and you try to gently put that cream that the doctor prescribed to prevent further bacteria or whatever. And the child in, in a moment's time starts feeling calm. And so it thought that it was going to take something that's very painful and scary. But actually, in a moment's time, it's going to feel calm, taken care of, kissed by its mom. <laughs> and start on this journey of transformation, of not going through that pain anymore. And my dear pile number one, this is exactly what I see as your message from your spirit guides on in regards to what's going on in your life at the moment. This was your reading and I truly hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. And also there are now memberships when you click on the join button below this video. I've also left a link first thing in the description box to make it easy for you guys to find. You become a member of the Soul Family um, memberships. It's honestly a great way to support me if you do feel like you can and choose to do so. I will be so grateful for those of you who have uh, become members. I want to greatly thank you for that kind support. It does make a huge difference. Thank you, difference. Thank you so much. When you become a member, you get a badge with a white feather whenever you comment down in the description box or in live streams. There are also stickers coming up. And my dear pile number one, I wish you the best of luck in this huge transformation that you're going through. Remind yourself that as you're going through this transformation, it's not going to be bad at all. These thoughts are just an illusion. You're releasing old karma and it's going to lead to great abundance. This is exactly what I see in your reading. I truly hope you've enjoyed it. And my dear pile number one, I'll catch you in the next. Oh, I just heard obliterated. Like this karma is going to be absolutely uh, destroyed. Just thought I should tell you. <laughs> okay, I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye. Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your reading. Your crystal is the beautiful selenite. And your card uh, that helped you choose this deck is the high priestess, which we will in fact honor and take for this reading. And if you've picked your pile using your zodiac signs, then in that case, the signs for this pile are Sagittarius, Aquarius, Cancer, and Gemini. Welcome to your reading. If these are not your zodiac signs, as I always remind you guys, please don't worry about it. It's just another way for some people to pick their piles as well. And they are, of course, not the official signs of the pile. Okay, so let's put these to the side and pull out the last oracle card for this reading. And today we're taking a look at your spirit guide's message on what is going on in your life at the moment. Uh, during the mid of the reading, we'll, we will be casting some runes on this chart um, of different areas and see some predictions for you as well. Okay, so let's start your reading. 
you have navigation. And release. Very interesting. Okay. You have ancient wisdom. Mm, well, we can keep it like this. You have the gardener. This definitely reminds me of, what is it called? Vertical um, agriculture or vertical farming, making use of vertical spaces. Perhaps that's outside the box thinking with the high priestess. You have my dear friend. Ah, and you have the ancient Egyptian god Knum with fertility. Look at that. Okay, interesting. Let's keep it here for now and take a look at your tarot cards and ask what is your spirit guide's message in regards to what is going on in your life at the moment? What is your spirit guide's message in regards to what's going on in your life at the moment? So I feel this one. You have the eight of pentacles. It's like you're learning right from wrong. Like you're mastering something. Uh, okay, let's hold on. The Ace of Swords. I got this job. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> you have the Temperance card. The Five of Wands. The Nine of Swords. The Tower card. Hmm. The Star card. That's really awesome. Okay. You have the Hanged Man. The Hanged Man energy is very strong in today's reading. And you have the Ten of Wands. Also, that was in the previous reading, the Hanged Man and the Ten of Wands. Okay, let's keep these to the side and see what your message is. I have this idea that you're releasing an old part of yourself. You can even see it with the High Priestess here. And you're soon becoming a new you with the economic energy of fertility of creating human beings the god that formed the bodies of human beings and children so i really see that you're going through a personal transformation at the moment you are changing and thus releasing an old you becoming a new you i feel like you've mastered a lot of things with the eight of pentacles, like that's why we got the idea of uh, right from wrong. Like you were able to go through the files of your mind through the temptations, which you can see in the background and go, oh, when I get these ideas, I don't have to follow them. Or it could literally be you refraining from food that was hindering your health or something. And you're, you've mastered something. You really have, <laughs> my dear pal number two, and you can already see your new self. So 
your guides are talking. It's almost like they're congratulating you. You guys told me like several times what you see in this image. It's like um, a game or something. If, if you can kindly rem remind me in the comment section, <laughs> I cannot remember. Um, but what I see here is like you're getting a prize, like you're leveling up. Um, you've completed something. You've manifested your new you with the temperance cards. You're, you're, you're shif shifting forms with the, te with the temperance. Exactly. You're shifting forms. And I almost hear a guy saying, congratulations, you're becoming your new you. Mm. This past destruction, although felt terrible, but it brought down so many things from the past that you maybe used to rely on that weren't really correct. And although I see a similarity between pile one and pile two, I did not recommend it because pile one was already going through that process. In your pile, however, because of the difference in energy here, I already see you walking through that veil. I see that you, that this has already happened. This has been brought down. There is the Ace of Swords. There is a new you being congratulated here. And so you finally saw, saw the light after this huge discomfort that you have been through in the past. And now uh, it's a time where your mind has opened up to a great sense where you go, ha, huh, well, the sky is literally my limit there's no limit and i'm starting to realize i can be whoever i want to be i can do and achieve whatever i want to achieve and there is this creative force do you see that creative this creative force that has ignited within you that's making you feel like you can do anything and so these days you're really releasing that old self I can't help but think in that context, since you have ancient wisdom, it's perhaps talking about releasing some ancient karma. Um, although I could be wrong, if we continue reading, I might see it as something else. But for the time being, I really see that you're releasing and all you and all karma, ancient karma. You know, it could be an ancestral pattern that you've broken out of as you were assisted uh, by your ancestors to help you finally release it from the family line and i think it has to do with how the family used to maybe behave towards certain situations or how they saw themselves or breaking out of a limiting belief or a trauma pattern. I think it's a trauma pattern. Breaking out of a trauma pattern where you now realized what you can do and what you, of course, can, 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 choosing to do the right thing than doing, than giving in to something that used to wreak havoc. I actually think it's your ancestors that are visiting you in this reading. They were there the whole time talking you out of it, helping you release this karma. And this was no easy thing. Uh, you probably went through the dark night of the soul. This was like a terrible release um, to help you see yourself in a new light. And although this is growing, ever growing with the gardener here, but you've definitely built a great foundation for more things to come. Along the process, you've been purging a lot of heavy emotions that you couldn't deal with in the past, along with specifically stress and anxiety that used to make you quarrel with others. With the red, do you see the red... Um, cloud of 
words being spoken, it's, it shows anger. So perhaps it was even affecting your speech or how you carried yourself, your poise, uh, or uh, in the past, the lack thereof. And you have, to, your guides are saying what's going on in your life at the moment is that you're finding your balance. You're grounded. You are poised. You are getting more into your higher self and more into feeling and understanding who you really are and not acting in accordance to these triggers or these past uh, karmas or emotions that were absolutely taking control of you. And your message in today's reading with the vertical farming is something very interesting. I feel like your guides are saying and your ancestors, as you're releasing your old you and you're now continuing to work towards the new you that you are becoming, if you feel like there are some things that you can't do, be creative, just like vertical farming. Let's say due to the circumstances or the losses that you have gone through, you feel like you've missed out on some things or maybe you can't achieve some things or it's too late or this or that. Your guides are saying, be creative. Just like uh, in some areas, vertical farming was a great solution. You too, maybe, and you can't do it one way, you don't have to do it exactly in the same way others are doing it. Maybe you're not meant to do it actually in the way that others are doing it. And you're meant to open your mind with the high priestess to finding different ways to go about achieving the things that you are dreaming of. Because when it comes to you achieving your dreams, that's your like cosmic right. And I heard cosmic right. I was like going to explain other things. I just heard cosmic right. So I said <laughs> cosmic right. That's your cosmic right. So no one can take that from you. Maybe just with the hat on the head and the illumination, you want to think outside the box and see what are other ways in which you can go about achieving that very dream or dreams that you have in your mind that you perhaps think is impossible or too late or you maybe don't have the right resources for them or think how are they going to appear out of the blue. They are your cosmic rights and you can achieve what you want in your heart. So... Just think differently. Ha use your wisdom to think outside of the box. And wisdom is like not following a, a specific thing um, stubbornly. It's like thinking, okay, well, it's not working in this direction. How about instead of shutting it off, think what other ways? That's closed. Fine. You can do that. How about we think of another way to achieve that dream? What could that other way be? And I believe that's the direction your guides want you to now start thinking is in. If it's not working in one direction, what other ways could you do? And I believe these cards will help, will help answer this question. Uh, and we'll do that in a moment. I just wanted to bring out and see some predictions for you. Let's honor the message, you know, let's finish that first and then <laughs> look at the predictions. I just felt like playing for a while, but let's uh, stick to the message first. What are you guided to do? Maybe these cards are like helping you think in a different way. The full card, exploring other areas, you see, this figure is like, ah, maybe if I can't find it on earth, I can find it on the moon. <laughs> so um, perhaps it's saying, depending on what your message is, maybe you see airplane, you see clouds, you see again sky and the lamp. So I'm getting an idea of exploring different locations, 
maybe the location that you're in doesn't have a fertile ground to help you in what you want to achieve, perhaps. Six of Cups. Uh, for some of you, could it be going back to something old that makes you very excited? Like um, connecting to old friends that encourage you, uh, connecting to older places that made you feel at your best. It's like co connecting back to something that made you feel your best, more, most confident self, perhaps. The five of pentacles, sale 80%. It's kind of like, don't be tempted. Not every deal is a good deal. Or not every idea that has worked for others may necessarily be working for you. Or it may look like it's working for others, but it's making them lose their mind or losing their resources. And perhaps you're more wiser than that. I feel your guides are saying, don't be tempted. If you think that there's only one way to do it, you may be wrong because it could be the very direction that could be taking from you rather than giving you. And so they don't want you to stress yourself looking in that direction going, oh, I can't do it like that. Uh, how am I supposed to do it like that? I feel that there is this gentle talk from your guide saying, you don't have to do it this way at all. If you feel it's wrong, you might just be right. Um, if you feel like, but this is the only way I can do it, but it's rubbing everything off of you, it may not just be the only way to do it. The Seven of Cups. It says, let me think. You know, the Seven of Cups is a card of building castles in the sky. It's also a card of um, having big dreams and hu huge imaginations which lets me think that you're a very creative person. And now you can see the squirrel exploring a new tree. And so your guides are saying to do something that you want to do with let me think. It's always about asking the first question. How can I do it? What other ways can I do it? If I had crazy powers or as crazy resources, or if there are any other ways I can do it, what are the other ways? How, to start asking, how can I do it? To start thinking, what is it that I want exactly? To identify in a more specific way with the menu, like be specific with what you want to choose and to come into your life. Be specific with that and start asking the golden question. How can I make that happen? Eight of Swords. It's funny, but this Eight of Swords is coming in a different light for me. You see how this person is the one locking themselves up. Oh, maybe they're afraid to go outside, you know. Uh, perhaps this deck was created in 2020. I'm not sure. But in, in what I'm seeing here is that sometimes it's the right thing to do, especially in the beginning, to have full discipline over yourself in starting something new that may be hard to do because it's pleasurable to do the opposite. So I feel your guides are saying, oddly enough with this specific Eight of Swords, like be very strict with yourself and take the necessary precautions to make sure that you stick to this preliminary stages of what you want to do, because that is the only way to that transition. Because it seems to me like the reward system otherwise is too strong. Um, and it's not allowing you to endure 
I don't want to say the pain, but to endure the difficulty of being disciplined towards this other route. So I feel like your guides are saying it's going to require you to be super disciplined with the decisions, specific decisions that you make. Yeah, looks like um, it will require strength, great strength, because the Queen of Wands here says boring. <laughs> so it might feel initially boring or you may not like the unpleasant feelings with it, um, but it's necessary. Oh, also the Queen of Wands is very powerful, is a great manifester. So this is saying that you're absolutely up for it, but you must um, be su super disciplined and help yourself to be super disciplined because I feel like there's something with regards to pain and pleasure. The pleasure is so, so much in the opposite side and thus making the pain feel even more. It, and the pain here is not like physical pain. I believe I could be wrong, but it's more like boring. It's like exercising it it feels much better to not exercise and it feels painful sometimes to exercise in the beginning but one must discipline discipline themselves to do that in order to feel healthier so yeah it's to stick to it although it feels boring although it feels painful although it feels hard to do because of the pain and the pleasure dynamics but it's necessary because it will ultimately free you to where you want to go. And you have the moon card. You get the idea of exploring in the dark. Have the boldness to explore different areas or different ways that you haven't done before. Like pick up on a, on a new habit or a new trait a new line, a new something, and try it out for the first time. Be bold to try new things. And this is your guidance in how to achieve the things that you want that may not, that may seem like they can't happen, but they actually 100% can, just in a different way of thinking outside the box, which definitely popped up with the seven of cups okay so let me now take a look at your predictions your guide's message on what to expect next which i really felt compelled to do when you're reading today so let's cast some rooms well i'll honor that you've got the um Ye Ewas. In your ten of wands so let's keep that okay you've got the manaz on the tower although i was only expecting to do the reading here but i feel drawn to reading it on your cards as well and you've got the no fees in your relationship uh, part of the board it's very interesting because right next to the relationships box is rescued. And I'll tell you why I noticed it. Because the Nothis rune is the will to survive. So when I was looking at your relationship box and the Nothis, I was like, is there a relationship in your life that you want to, that you want to continue in your life? If that's the case, you have an answer that there is an important relationships or maybe the relationship area in your life as a whole, depending on how this resonates with you, can absolutely be saved should you have the will to make it work with the Nothis rune. I mean, the more you put effort into this area, the more you will definitely revive it and rescue it. You can make that like abundant in your life with all the grass here. Now, the second thing I'm noticing is the runes on the cards have a very similar meaning. So here with the Manaz rune, which is the potential to achieve anything, falls on the tower card. 
making me uh, see that your guys want to tell you that in whichever area of your life that you want to achieve something in, no matter how big it seems, your answer is always to make a bold move forward, uh, to break out of a specific fear, break out of a specific limitation and go actually uh, out and do something bold with it. And bold doesn't have to always be scary. It may be comfortable. Sometimes bold could be comfortable. It's just doing something bold that you haven't done before. And what do I mean by bold doesn't have to be scary? Like, for example, maybe what you want to do is have start some yoga classes, for example. And that will be super enjoyable for you. But you haven't just taken the action. And the bold move would be picking up the phone and going, Hey, I, actually, I want to reserve uh, classes. Where can I pay? Uh, and paying the, for these classes and going right. So now that it's set, I must actually go. So yeah, it's always making a bold move. And, and that will be your key to making something work in your life. You will always have the potential to do whatever it is that you want. And you can see here the AWAS again, it's stored potential. Like what are the odds <laughs> in the 10 of wands? Actually, this makes me think beginnings and endings. So if you want to begin anything, make a bold move. Also, this is saying whenever something ends in your life or whenever something is heavy in your life, know that lies within it, just like a seed is stored potential that you can use to your favor to do something great in your life. And my dear pile number two, th these are exactly the messages that I see in your pile of what your guides wanted to say to you. Most importantly, they want to congratulate you for the great work that you have done to find your balance today. All the best of luck with everything, my dear pile number two. Congratulations <laughs> on your, the path that you've reached. You've come so far and you're going so far. This was your reading. And if you've enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. Also, there are now memberships when you click on the join button below this video. Uh, I've also left a link first thing in the description box to make it easy for you to find. You become a member of the soul. You become a soul family um, member. And it's honestly a great way to support me if you can and decide to do so. I thank you so much. You have no idea what a great difference uh, it makes. For those of you who decided to support me, I genuinely want to thank you. Thank you so much for helping me be able to do these readings for you every day to continue to do them. Thank you so much. It, like I said, it is making a big difference. Thank you. And my dear pile number two, sending you so much love. So proud of you. <laughs> and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye. Hi, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. Your crystal is the blue dot jasper. And your card is the moon card. This is the deck that we will be using. Let's take out your moon card. And if you've picked your pile using your zodiac signs, then in that case, the signs for this pile are Aries, Leo, Taurus, and Pisces. Welcome to your reading. I feel like you've got these two cards. If these are not your zodiac signs, as I always remind you guys, please don't worry about it. It's just another way for others to pick their piles as well. And... Um, they are not the official zodiac signs of this pile. So let's pull out your last oracle card and see what you have. So you've got Nile with Journey, Happy with Journey. It reminds me of Happy, right? <laughs> Okay, let's keep it right there. You've got Thoth, Anubis, moving, in my opinion, from the east to the west, from the land of 
the dead to the land of the living. And you can see a movement here. You can see a body of water again. And the Nile was very important to ancient Egypt. It is what It is what caused the whole civilization. Without the Nile, there wouldn't be anything. Because uh, 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 like in the med middle of the desert, life was able to be formed. So, oh, you've got a moving water of body again. Isn't that interesting? Movement on water, psychic development. Ooh, okay. There we go. That's another aspect. Is it like your guides talking about how you have psychic capabilities that are reviving? Like becoming very strong, maybe even during the next lunar eclipse? I think the next lunar eclipse is going to be on the 24th. So... I if I if I were you guys pile number 3 I would look out for the next lunar eclipse because there is a strong psychic ability being heightened either during that time or moving on So you've got Nefertiti with feminine power look at that it's known that feminine power is psychic power right Ooh I love this for you <laughs> Okay, so let's see what's going on in your life at the moment and why you're getting this message. Look at that protective nest. You can also see that this woman is aware of the life above her, not just below her. Above the head. Wow. Is it the power of... The knowing, maybe? We'll find out in a moment. And you have re-energize. Wow. Something is blossoming here for, for sure. It pertains your, to your psychic abilities and your mind. And I wonder why you're getting that message when it comes to what's going on in your life at the moment. Maybe what's going on in your life, in your reading, is things that are about to happen for you. Oh, so excited about this reading. <laughs> Let's find out more. So, for pile number three, please. What are their messages from their spirit guides on what's going on in their lives at the moment, please? You've got the King of Swords. I feel like they're predicting here. In this meeting they're watching the charts they are realizing maybe what's making the most revenue or what's making the most sales if this is a business meeting or um, they're looking at the numbers it doesn't have to be sales so they're looking at the numbers what's affecting what uh, in order to take the right course of action right so prediction so will you have a strong psychic ability of predicting something of being able to predict or foresee the future Perhaps that will be so cool. <laughs> okay. You have the three of pentacles or is that manifestation? Oh my God. Look at the same uh, hand gesture holding the pen. It could be both. Whoa. Okay. I just got a crazy idea. <gasps> Guys, I just got a crazy idea. I thought to myself, looking at these two cards in parallel, do businesses, are businesses able to manifest because without realizing they're using the power of manifestation, of having an in intention, goal, right? Writing down what they want, their vision, right? Uh, and taking action, writing them down, uh, seeing the patterns. Oh my God, I've never thought about this before. Uh, seeing the patterns, right? The synchronicities, the patterns, they look at the patterns of what the um, market behavior is. And they're able to accurately predict what the behavior of the market is going to be based on the, the synchronicities that they're getting. And if you ask them, why is the market behaving like that? Why would it always get that more or less that amount of sales every month they would say we don't know 
<laughs> it's just what it is. So without knowing, businesses are one of the most people that are applying the ideas of the uh, manifestation without realizing. And so if you look what they're doing, what they're doing is they're all, they always have their goals clear every quarter, every year. They write down in their reports and their emails what they want to achieve. They make it super clear. They write down the course of actions that they're going to take to make it happen. They watch the patterns, make use of them to understand things better and use that to their favor. And so I feel like your guides are saying you're going to have a heightened understanding of your capabilities to manifest in your world at the moment. And they are also guiding you to use that same techniques that pe people have been manifesting with for thousands of years without knowing for, to your favor, write down what it is that you want to achieve. Start writing plans of how to achieve them and start taking action. And also notice the synchronicities in your life and what they're showing you and use it to your favor. Everything in the universe is in numbers. Wow. <laughs> and so use that to your favor. That is awesome. Okay, let's take a look at your cards. You have the nine of swords. The ten of wands. Hmm. Oh, okay. I'm seeing another thing here. So this is heightened. Your psychic abilities to manifest, predict and manifest are becoming stronger because of all this water here is talking about cleansing. And I noticed this is talking about cleansing for two reasons. You have re-energized here with the, with the flower blossoming and you have two cards that talk about stress, anxiety, care, carrying a lot of responsibilities and feeling the blues of it, uh, feeling the heavy energy, so to speak, with the Ten of Wands. So re-energize the moon, the water bodies. I feel like your guides are saying your world is changing as a consequence of the actions that you've been taking lately in your mind. And that is releasing. That's why you're moving from the east to the west to the living, from the dead to the living. I feel like your heavy emotions have been uh, stealing life from you. And with re-energize, you definitely have been cleansing these emotions. You've been doing great work to cleanse out uh, stress. And you must have been working on releasing your stress, your anxiety, your heavy, free, heavy emotions. This is like hiring your frequency. Uh, and that is with Anubis allowing you to enter another gateway, which is the gateway of happiness. Look at that, happy. What, what is this happy? I want to check the guidebook. Happy, hold on. It's not there. Don't tell me it's the ancient Egyptian word for Nile. I don't think so. Let me check. Oh, it's the ancient Egyptian god of the annual flooding of the Nile. Okay, so you can see that you're going to be happy and that there's going to be a flood of abundance in your life coming up next. So nice to see this for you. Okay. So nice. It's like it's your time for abundance your uh, um, manifestation capabilities is going to be heightened. I would make so much use of the so lunar eclipse on the 24th because it's like I would manifest things like write your goals, write exactly what you want to achieve on that day. You have the stars card. Wow, it's a time where your dreams are going to be achieved, manifested. 
look at that the seven of cups this is exactly what i was talking about like on the lunar eclipse and uh, make yourself a nice drink sit down and start writing your goals and your dreams and uh, your plans like cut out a nice hour or two maybe sit right in front of the moon bring down your journal or your planner write down your goals what it is that you want to achieve and start writing plans on uh, how you want to achieve them and moving on from that time keep a journal of jotting down results like how many times did you achieve this goal or what were the responses and notice a pattern because that is what's going to help you manifest what you want notice a pattern it's a message showing you something the seven of cups start putting out your biggest dreams the ace of swords the power of the pen is how i'm seeing this hold your biggest power the power of the pen draw it write it down start breaking it down on how you're going to achieve it and you are going to achieve it everything that you write down on that day you you will be achieving you have wow <laughs> the ten of pentacles you've got the sun card i love these cards for you and you've got the judgment card yes rising to a new world and that's why you have anubis it's like the gatekeeper to the other world and i feel like you're gonna transcend the world you're already living in as you're alive of course moving into an a newer world it's like uh, being transported to another portal living your life in a much better way it sounds crazy but so true and the seven of wands the chart again in fact i keep getting you'll be rising to such a great degree manifesting all of the things that you want and more living a very positive happy life if you watch the patterns write down your goals and watch the synchronicities you keep getting in this pile the same message it's crazy it's like the most important thing that your guides are insisting on showing you today how important it is especially on the new on the sorry lunar eclipse ritual And I just checked the lunar eclipses on the 25th, not the 24th in Libra. Okay. Look, someone's been journaling, putting pictures in their journal, imagining Knight of Cups. I mean, the more cards I get, it's like, this is your message today. Imagine, envision, put the pictures down, write it down. And the ace of cups and you shall receive that's the womb of the cosmos <laughs> and you shall receive so make sure that your head is clear these days you know if you experience any lower frequency emotions try to calmly release them and stay tranquil level-headed and through this cleanse will truly help you to manifest everything that you want these days uh, your guides are saying um there's a message of what's going on in your life and it's looking towards the future because your guides want to tell you that your life can change has the potential of moving to almost another portal if you make use of that opportunity and uh, just like the cards keep showing you throughout this reading write it down you know we've already discussed this because it's going to change your whole life, uh, almost shifting directions towards a more lively, positive time of your life. So make sure you make use of that energy that's coming. Uh, you know, tarot cards, they can almost show you like the climate of what energies around are around you, what you can make use of. And, to, and today's reading, you can really see your guides are 
they want to guide you to use that great manifestation power psychic ability that is growing in your favor okay so let's take some quick predictions of what to expect next in your life my dear pile number three we've done it in all of the piles so what should pile number three expect next in their lives please oh so well we've got the ansu's rune between the judgment and the seven of wands and you've got the Peroth rune in wish fulfillment. Oh, love that for you. So you've got good fortune in the wish fulfillment department. And at this point, this is not a synchronicity. This was your basically your whole reading. <laughs> your capabilities of making your dreams come true. You have good fortune to help you do that. Also, by the way, some of you may have specific dreams about good companionship because that's also the Peroth rune. Have some dreams of having a good companion, whatever this, this means to you. So that is coming true next for you. And then you have the Ansu's rune with good communication, being uh, literate, Oh, writing. In this case, it's writing. I cannot believe it. <laughs> the insistence on how writing, because that's the rune of Odin, wisdom, um, intellect. So here, this is saying, this is, I can't believe it. I swear it's like your spirit guides are literally saying it if they can speak this is what they would be saying write your goals down because you will this is the ritual in which you will manifest what you want so this is what's coming next for you i mean no matter what type of different tools that i use this is your message write down and manifest what you want it's coming true for you my dear pile number three this is exactly what i see in your reading as what is going on in your life at the moment this is the energy surrounding you this is what your guides want you to make use of this was your reading and if you've enjoyed it please give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that i upload and also there are now memberships when you click on the join button below this video i've also left a link first thing in the description box to make it easy for you to find you become a member of the soul family memberships a part of the soul fa family memberships and it's honestly a great way to support me if you can and decide to do so i thank you so much and i thank those of you who have decided to become members to support me you really make it possible for me to continue to do what i do and that is to do ne readings nearly every day for you guys thank you so much for this you know, I didn't, I really didn't want to like make uh, extra readings paid in the memberships. I wanted to leave it out completely up to you to, if you want to get into the memberships and support me, thank you. But I will be doing free readings for you guys. Um, I, that's how I want to do it. Um, I want to be able to do that for you guys every day. And so if you can and decide to just know that I thank you from the heart. Thank you so much. <laughs> and my dear pile number three, this was your reading, sending you so much love. <laughs> and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye.